Hey guys, so it's about 10 o'clock on Wednesday morning, July 3rd, and I'm just getting ready for my barbecue prep for uh, our big party tomorrow. And I'm excited to share all of my preparations with you guys uh, over the next two days. Um, I think I'm just going to, you know, kind of keep it vlog style, but I'm going to try to share as much of my barbecuing methodology as I can. And uh, I might break this up into two videos. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, for now, I was just going over my plan here. Um, these are the, the list of menu items that I am responsible for. Uh, and I underlined in red the ones that I'm going to try to get done today. So I'm going to do uh, wings and serve that with some of the barbecue sauce and uh, a sour cream hot sauce kind of dip. Uh, the wings I'm going to grill real quick and then smoke, but I'll do that tomorrow. They go quick. Um, I'm going to do Alton Brown's cornbread uh, with honey butter. And the cornbread I want to make fresh tomorrow, but the honey butter I can make today. Uh, I'm going to do smoked baby back ribs and those in my experience are actually better the next day. Uh, they're a, a low slow smoke for a good four, four and a half hours. And uh, I feel like the smoky flavor is even better uh, the second day. So I'm going to do those today and I've already made my barbecue sauce. Uh, you guys may have seen that video, but I'm sort of going to go crazy with the different variations this time and have a little station where you can try a couple. Uh, so I'm planning to make a honey um, version, a raspberry version, a bourbon version, a jalapeno, and a habanero. Uh, so those uh, I, I can prep all those today as well. I'm also going to do some smoked chicken thighs tomorrow with all the same sauces. Chicken thighs go quick. I'll do that tomorrow. I'm going to do smoked lamb. I just received, uh, just FedEx dropped off the lamb this morning. Uh, I ordered it from Lobel's in New York, which is a great butcher in New York. Uh, these are French racks of lamb, uh, pretty expensive, but just just absolutely exquisite. Uh, the the smoked rack of lamb is always the most popular dish, uh, and I do a, a smoked vegetable relish. This time I'm going to roast some of the vegetables uh, as well as smoke them, and I'm going to do a mint version, a cilantro version, and a habanero version of that. So I'll, the relish I'll do today. That's one of the big projects for today is getting all those vegetables ready. Uh, but the lamb I'll do tomorrow. That's quick smoke and margaritas. Um, going to make fresh limeade today so that then it'll be easy to mix up a big picture of margaritas for tomorrow. Uh, Patron Añejo tequila, uh, with fresh limeade is a, a winning margarita combination every time. Uh, so that's my plan. And, uh, Jennifer is in the kitchen right now getting some little mini blueberry pies ready. The light's not so good there. Uh, so I'm hoping I can squeeze in there to start rubbing up my ribs and I'm gonna go get my, uh, my smoker prepared. So to get my grill started, uh, I just lit my charcoal chimney stack here, some newspaper at the bottom. Uh, we'll get all that charcoal going. I've got these uh, Kingsford all natural competition briquettes. It's what they were selling at Costco in the big uh, two by 18 pound package. So that's what I got. And uh, what I really wanted to show off is this, uh, the wood that I'm gonna be cooking with today. This is from a new, uh, not new, but new to me supplier. This is from frutawoodchunks.com. I just found these folks with a Google search. I had always bought my wood on the internet um, from some other place called like Barbecue Chunk Store. But uh, I was watching Barbecue Pitmasters and all those guys smoke with like whole logs and I got jealous and I wanted to try some. So I found this place that sells these bigger chunks uh, that they call half splits or semi splits. And they did this cool combo box where I got 50 pounds of wood and it's a third uh, peach and a third apple and a third cherry. I've used apple and cherry wood in the past. This is the cherry, it's just gorgeous. Uh, that's the apple. They're both very nice and sweet. Uh, I've never used peach wood before. Well, I did this weekend uh, in my test kitchen, the first time I used this wood, but the winningest chef on the competition barbecue circuit, uh, Myron Mixon, exclu uh, cooks exclusively on peach wood. So I figured I'd try that too. All these fruit woods uh, will have a very nice sweetness to them. And a lot of people smoke with hickory, which is a nice, good uh, hard wood that burns slowly, but it's just got a little bitterness to it. Uh, mesquite is the other one that you always find at stores. Mesquite burns hotter and uh, it doesn't have the same kind of sweet flavor that these fruit woods do. So I never use mesquite, maybe like for chicken, uh, but 
but the, I like the fruit woods better. This mixture I think is going to be fantastic. I'm very excited about it. Actually, I've got these cherry wood chips that are from my old supplier, charcoalstore.com. I mean, great place. They just don't sell those big splits. Uh, these are chips. They're smaller. And if my fire is ever like a little below temperature, I can just sprinkle these chips on and they'll burn real quick and, and get the heat back. So it's time to start prepping the baby back ribs to go on the smoker. And I've got six racks here that I picked up at Dominic's. Now, if you watch this whole video or the series of videos, you're going to notice that there's a very large amount of food. And we are going to have almost 30 people, I think, but it's still a lot of meat. There's a few factors there. One of which is, uh, you know, my nephew is a new Navy recruit, and he was going to bring an indeterminate number of... Uh, fellow uh, Navy recruits going through their training from the Great Lakes uh, base up there and I don't want those boys to leave hungry and I bet they can eat a lot so I want to have a lot of meat. Um, I also like to have leftovers. All this stuff is great the next day and some people like to take some home with them but it's also my mom's side of the family we have a compulsion to buy too much food. It's just the way it is. <laughs> we like to have parties and honestly there's no there's nothing in the world that could be more mortifying or more embarrassing than not having enough food at a party. So I have a compulsion to just always buy one or two more of everything. I can't help it. Uh, it, it just is what it is. Anyway, six racks of baby bags here. Um, I am going to cut them out of this plastic. I'm going to rinse them off, then I'm going to pat them dry, and then I'll show you how I oil and rub them. So I just dumped my charcoal into the uh, firebox here, and I poured probably 15, 20 coals uh, additionally on top because I know I'm going to need them to get this big cast iron up to temperature and to hold it once I add all that meat from the ribs. Uh, this is my smoker. It's what's called an offset smoker uh, where the fire box is over there offset from the cooking chamber which is this big barrel. This is sometimes called a pit uh, rather than a grill. It's a smoking pit. Uh, so the way this works is that the airflow uh, comes from the right side here through these grates and I've got it wide open to get my fire going and once I get to temperature I'll close it down to, to make it go slower. Uh, comes through here and then out the uh, smokestack over here on the left so we have that open partially to get the flow and I've got my wireless thermometer probe ready to go and taped up here so it'll transmit to a thing I can carry around with me and keep track of the temperature. And this is a close barbecue pit, uh, handmade down in Texas, barbecuepits.com. Close is a uh, very well respected maker of barbecue pits. And uh, here's a look at the cooking chamber. You can see the wire from my probe coming down there. Got two levels set up. Uh, and um, experimenting with this water pan in the bottom, which I saw some of the competition barbecue cooks do, they have water in there. And the way this is set up, um, I don't know if you can see the little flap right there that's coming from the right. That is uh, um, blocking. It's not blocking, but it's covering the top. Oh, there you go. You can so you can see the coals coming through there, right? So this is how the heat gets into the cooking chamber. And having this big pan of water right there is going to block a lot of the direct heat. Now, it's already indirect, but I think this is going to help keep this spot a little cooler relative to this spot and try and have more of an even lower temperature across the whole cooking area which is what you want especially when you're doing a lot of meat at once you got to watch out for one side being hotter than the other um, and I think I said the water pan is also there to add moisture and keep everything nice and juicy so it'll be a good half hour before we get up to temperature I want to see 225 to 250 uh, before I put the ribs on all right so I've got my ribs here uh, after they've been rinsed and patted dry and one of the things with ribs is that there's this membrane uh, along the bottom, which is sometimes easy to get off and sometimes very hard. The trick is to start from the end. I use this skinny little knife to get the edge up. And then if it's hard to grab, it always helps to use a paper towel. Then ideally you can just pull it all back in one swipe. Uh, so this is just like a little, it's a membrane that, you know, just adds a little unappetizing texture to the bottom but honestly when it's too hard to get off I just leave it on and just score it a little bit and especially when you're doing this long slow smoke uh, it's really really hard to notice if it's still there uh, but that one came off really easy so why not um, let's see if I can get this one yeah this one's gonna be harder <laughs> uh, try one more over here 
I think maybe from that end. It's hard to find the spot where you're going to be able to pull from. There we go. So I just kind of pulled straight up there to get it going. Grab it with my paper towel. And bingo. So I'm going to do the best I can with these membranes, and then it'll be time to oil and rub. All right, so I was able to get the membrane off of five out of six racks. So this one I just scored, uh, and it'll be fine. And now what I'm going to do is oil and rub them on this foil, and then stack them up in this pan to sit for 30, 45 minutes or so. And the rub I'm going to use is my Uncle Jack's proprietary blend. Uh, I posted this recipe already in my barbecue sauce video. I'll, I'll write it out again here. I already mixed it though, it's right there. Um, paprika, Cajun spice, lemon pepper, Jamaican jerk, garlic powder, onion salt, kosher salt, cumin ground cloves, and ground marjoram. It is awesome and good on almost anything. Uh, so let's get going. All right, so I'm gonna start with a, a little canola oil, uh, just enough to get it coated. I'll rub that in. over. A little more. There we go. Oh. Alright, <laughs> wipe the hands off a little. Get a nice tablespoon of rub. Nice dusting. That in. I'm actually going to try to go a little lighter with the rub than I usually do. It, you know, it creates a beautiful bark, but these are some nice juicy pieces of meat, and I really want to let the meat shine through. So I'm going to try not to be too thick. The other thing is I've got this new spritzing process uh, that I learned again from Barbecue Pitmasters, where you spritz with an apple juice type mixture throughout the cooking. And that adds another layer of flavor. And so I just, you know, I don't want to overdo it with the rub. But you definitely want to get the meat coated. And it is, it's a rub. It's called a rub for a reason. You definitely want to rub it in. You don't want to take it in. You want to rub it in. That's looking gorgeous. These are very large racks of baby back ribs. I've never seen them. I don't know if you can see from this angle, but they're very pointed right here. It's going to be a meaty, meaty rib. Uh, all right, so that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to stack it over here in my pan and uh, do that six more times or five more times. All right, so there we have six racks rubbed and ready to go. I'm going to cover this in foil and let it sit for 30, 40 minutes. And by that time, my grill should be up to temperature and we'll be ready to do some barbecuing. All right, so while I'm waiting on the smoker to get ready, I'm going to start working on my lime juice for the limeade for the margaritas. And, uh, you know, we do have an electric juicer, actually, where you kind of hold the lime on top and the thing whirs around. Uh, but, you know, in my experience, the so much of the flesh and pulp gets caught up in the little filter when you do that. You got to stop and clean it out every three limes. Uh, it's not really faster. So I'm doing the old-fashioned handheld method here. I've got 40 limes. I'm going to try to juice them all so we're prepared with tons of limeade. Um... I'm just going to try to bang these out. Alright, so that actually didn't take too long. Um, 40 limes, about 7 cups of lime juice apparently. Um, going to put that in the fridge and uh, let Jennifer take over the kitchen now for a while. So here are the ribs after resting for about 30-40 minutes and now I'm ready to throw them on the smoker. All right, so with my smoker temp at 250, I just put all six racks of my ribs on. And uh, right before I put the ribs on, I added one uh, split of cherry and one split of peach to my charcoal. Uh, you know, the charcoal we use to get the smoker up to temperature and to kind of start the fire, but I want to cook the ribs with as much heat from the wood as possible. That'll give it even better flavor. Uh, so now that the, the meat is on, I want to start using the wood. I um, think I'm going to add a handful of chips here. I was at 250, but when you open up the chamber, you lose a lot of heat. I dropped down to 1, 
75, although this said 160 just a moment ago, so I'm going to take a handful of cherry chips here to uh, stoke my fire. So that'll burn quick and <laughs> nicely. Uh, we should even be able to see, well, this will, it'll take a few seconds, but we'll see the smoke start coming out of there nice and thick. Uh, when you are doing the slow smoking process, the meat uh, takes most of the smoke that it's going to take in the first two hours. After that, uh, it doesn't take as much smoke flavor. So if you want to get that infused, it's important to uh, get it smoking early on. You know, a lot of people, they always say, don't worry. I mean, they say they're concerned about putting too much smoke onto the meat. I, I, you know, I smoke the heck out of these things. I don't think they ever come off too smoky. But, you know, I like that kind of barbecue. That's just me. Um, anyway, we're starting to come through there. Oh, right. So I had closed my grate because we got so hot. But now, just while I'm trying to recover temperature, I'll open that back up. And that'll really get the fire stoking. There we go, all the way back to 199. Now you got to be careful not to overshoot, but I, I want to get to, you know, 225 to 250. I think 250 is a happy temperature, but not more than 270 for sure. We started with two of my smaller splits of peach uh, and cherry there because I wanted them to get burning quickly. I think I'm only going to give this about 5-10 minutes and then I'll add uh, some of the bigger ones and then the fire should be good for like a, you know, a half hour after that, maybe more. Alright, so now I'm working on my spritzing liquid for the ribs that I'll spritz a few times throughout the cooking process. And I've started by getting about three quarters of this Leinenkugel Honeywise spear uh, on the stove and reducing down for just a few minutes. And now to that I'm going to add roughly an equal amount of apple cider and then a dash of apple cider vinegar and let it all cook down for a few more minutes. Alright, so I've had this cooking down for not quite ten minutes with just enough heat to get it bubbling like that and I just gave it a taste. Uh, it's tasting very good, just a little bit of vinegar, you know, not too much. I see some of these recipes for the wet mop spritzy thing that have a ton of vinegar in them. And that's like one style of barbecue, not my favorite. I think just a bit of vinegar to, to balance it out is better. So, very pleased with this. Now I'm going to take it off the heat and let it cool for a while. I want it to be warm when I spritz it on the ribs because I don't want to spritz cold liquid on my hot ribs while I'm trying to cook them, but I also don't want it to be so hot that it melts my plastic bottle. So somewhere in the middle is what we're shooting for. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes since I put the ribs on. It took a little bit of time to uh, nurse my fire in the sink, but now I've got those uh, two bigger hunks on. I had a little more charcoal in the back. We're burning nicely. You know, I, I got my grate kind of just medium open. Gonna close that up a little bit because we just passed 225 on our way to 230, uh, so that's prime time for temperature. Anywhere in 225 to 250 makes me happy. Uh, and it is just starting to rain a little bit. I'm not sure if you can tell. Uh, that is gonna be a factor. <laughs> um, just a little bit of rain won't be a problem. If it rains a lot, that'll start cooling off the grill a little bit. Actually, the trickier thing is the wind. If the wind picks up when this weather comes in, it starts affecting the airflow and it can either make it hotter or it can make it colder, but it makes it less consistent. I have a trick for that actually, which is that I'll rotate my grill 90 degrees so that it's facing the wall and it's a little more protected. It's kind of harder to work on that way, so hopefully I won't have to do it. We'll see. So it's been raining pretty steadily now for 10 or 15 minutes, but it's just the light mist and it's not too windy, so that's not too bad. It just means I'll need a little extra fuel to keep my temperature because all this water evaporating on top of the smoker. And I also added a little hat to my uh, thermometer transmitter uh, so it doesn't get We're too wet. along very nicely. I just added one big chunk of cherry wood and some more charcoal to keep it going. So after about an hour and 20 minutes, I just did a rotation of all the ribs so they cook evenly and just the light spritzing with my liquid and uh, I'll let them go for another 45 minutes. And there's my fire burning very nicely. Alright, so it's been about 45 minutes. Time to uh, spritz the ribs again. Just a, you know, a quick spray. I don't want to saturate them. I already did the ones on top. That's all we need. And I'll get this closed up. 
So I wanted to get the lid uh, closed as quickly as possible there so I don't let out too much smoke and heat and flavor. Now there are some chefs, uh, some barbecuers that uh, are adamant that you never want to open the, the cooking chamber and they say don't worry about spritzing. Um, you know, I'm experimenting with the spritzing. I think it's fun. I think it'll add some more flavor and moisture. Uh, but you still want to get that thing closed as quickly as possible to keep in the heat and the smoke. But uh, the, those ribs are looking great. We're about two hours and 15 minutes uh, into a, a four hour, maybe four hour and 15 minute cooking process. And they're looking beautiful. So. so now it's time to get to work on the vegetable relish. And in the past, I've smoked all of the vegetables for this relish, but this time, I'm gonna do a mixture of smoking some and roasting others on a very hot grill. I think that'll produce a better balance of flavors. Uh, but these are all the veggies that are gonna go on the smoker. And the first step is always to pierce everything once or twice with the fork. Then I'm gonna oil them, then I'm gonna season them with my rub, and then they should be good to go. And what I've got here are a couple of zucchini, a uh, big white onion, some garlic, and a bunch of poblanos. Uh, the, these big poblano peppers will take the smoke very nicely. I held back a couple of them that I'm going to roast. Then I'm going to also roast uh, some tomatoes and some little bell peppers. Probably another onion. And then bring all that together with some herbs and some spices. And should make for a good uh, smoked and roasted vegetable relish to accompany the smoked lamb. So I think I got all of those. Now we just do a little, little dusting of oil. I've got some canola oil here uh -huh. and I'll rub this in and then do a little dusting of the that same rub that I used on the ribs okay so now just a, a light dusting of the rub tried to be light anyway and I'll just kind of rub it in Spin. All right, so hopefully I can find some room to fit these guys on the smoker around the ribs. All right, so I was able to squeeze the veggies on the grill. The ribs are still looking gorgeous, just stoked on fire. And I'm gonna let those vegetables go for about 45 minutes, maybe an hour. So while those vegetables are smoking, I'm gonna do this honey butter real quick. I've got two sticks or one pound of this delicious Kerrygold Irish butter. And I've got it in the mixer here and I'm gonna beat it on a low speed for just a few minutes to loosen it up. Uh, this is Alton Brown's honey butter recipe. I'm also gonna add a quarter cup of honey and I got my cinnamon and vanilla over there too. So Alton Brown's recipe said use the whisk attachment on your mixer to soften the butter. Uh, Jennifer, the mix master expert, uh, warned me that would not work. She said use the paddle, but I thought Alton is the, the genius of cooking, so I should give his approach a shot. However, Jennifer won this battle because all of the butter got stuck in there. So I'm going to scrape it out and uh, give this one a try. Okay, I was able to get most of the butter off of that whisk attachment, so now let's give the paddle a try. That looks much more like the action that we wanted, so I'm going to let this go for a couple of minutes and then I'll add the uh, other ingredients. Okay, so the butter is prepped and now here we go with one teaspoon of cinnamon. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. And one quarter cup of honey. Since it's hard to get all the honey out of there, I'm going to add just one more little squirt. Okay, and now we want to blend on a higher speed for five to seven minutes, according to Alton. So I'll just start it slow to get the cinnamon all incorporated. Now speed it up a little. Seems 
seems like a good speed. I'm just going to stir it every so often. Pause it for a minute to knock the butter off of the middle of this thing. Much easier with this paddle than it is with the whisk. Uh, and give it a scrape off the sides down at the bottom. Yeah, there's a little bit way at the bottom that wasn't getting mixed. Oh, this smells good. Just gonna do this one more time to make sure we get everything very well combined. I've never made honey butter before, but there's this great summer theater place out in Utah uh, at Sundance where they do this outdoor theater. And uh, ever since I was a little kid, we've been going there. One of the things you can get at their concession stand is a, a nice big warm loaf of bread that they've always served with this honey butter that just fantastic, great flavor, great memory. So I'm excited to be making this today. And actually, I've got to give credit to my friend Nick, who was over on Friday for the test kitchen. As we were tasting Alton's cornbread, it's delicious, but it's not a sweet cornbread. There's not much sugar in it. I was going to add more sugar, and I was saying I'll put honey in the cornbread. My friend Nick said, you know, I don't really like sweet cornbread, but I love honey butter. And I thought that was brilliant. Put the butter, put the honey in the butter. So that's what I'm doing. Thanks, Nick. Great idea. All right, just a couple more minutes. Maybe just one more minute, and I think it'll be done. All right, let's give this a taste. Oh, baby. Oh, that's really good. Oh, is it too sweet? Hmm. <laughs> I'm eating butter with this spoon. Um. Wow. That's good. Cinnamon and vanilla and honey. I mean, how can you not love that in anything? I mean, combined in butter, that's uh, utterly fantastic. It's I, I can't decide if it's too sweet or not. I might add more butter to cut it. Uh, gonna try it again in a few minutes and see how we feel. So I've actually got this cornbread that I got at Dominic's leftover that's an inferior cornbread, but I figure why not try the butter on the cornbread to see how it works that way. Oh, that's good. Oh, it's not too sweet. Oh, let me put it on the cornbread. Mm. Oh, baby. It's going to be good. All right, so it wasn't terribly elegant, but through a combination of spooning and spatulating, <laughs> uh, I got all of my honey butter onto two pieces of parchment paper so I can roll it into a log. And as you can see, uh, no honey butter left behind. Uh, this stuff is too delicious to leave in the bowl. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this, but basically I want to roll this into a sort of a log shape. Squeeze it out a little. That's the idea. Give it a little more going down that way. There we go. That's sort of what I'm looking for, I think. So I'm going to be shaping it out to be there we go. A little longer. Trying to keep it, get the bubbles out. Alright, I think that one came out even better. There we go. Honey butter log. So we're at about three and a half hours for the ribs and 45 minutes for the veggies. And stuff is looking good. So I thought the veggies might be done, but upon closer inspection, they weren't quite. Uh, I just pulled these two off that were a little more well done. Said it's been about 45 minutes. I'll probably give them another 10 minutes and then pull them off and then do another rotation and spritz in my ribs. Meanwhile, I just uh, got my grill fired up on high heat. Uh, I'm going to preheat this to get it almost uh, just about as hot as I can get it to char and roast the other vegetables that I didn't smoke that are going to go into this relish for the lamb. So these are the vegetables that I'm going to roast on the hot grill. I've got some little bell peppers, I have another onion, I have these small tomatoes, 
Uh, I've got a couple more poblanos just to get some variety <laughs> in how we cook them, uh, and some jalapenos and some habaneros for the spicy version. And so I'm just going to do the same thing I did before, a little oil, a little rub, and then they'll go out on the grill. So here they are, nicely oiled and rubbed. And here are the veggies that just came off the smoker. Uh, most of the, all the poblanos looked done. Uh, I left one of the zucchini on there and uh, the onion looked like they might need a little more time. But everything else is looking good. Reading about 450 on the grill thermometer here. It is hot in there. So I'm gonna get this grill surface very nicely oiled with this canola spray, and then uh, it's time to roast these veggies. All right, so here we go. Uh, I'm not sure how long this is gonna take. Some of these little guys will go pretty fast, so I'm gonna try to give this my complete attention. Got my big onion in the center where it's the hottest. Usually I would do veggies over here on the thin side, but since I wanna get these charred, I'm doing them on the thick slotted side. I just have the little hot arrows over there so I don't lose them. All right, we've been roasting for about three minutes, and I'm just trying to turn everything constantly and uh, coming along nicely. Okay, so here we have the roasted vegetables. It may look like they are burnt to a crisp, but that was the objective. Uh, they're looking very good, and I'm just going to give this onion a few more minutes. All right, so it's just after 5 o'clock. Uh, ribs have about 15 minutes left on the smoker, I think. I've got all the vegetables in. Still got to make the relish, but the chef is ready for a cocktail. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to sneak in a little experimental cocktail corner here. I'm going to try combining F and Cucumber Vodka with uh, Simply Limeade and see what happens. Glass of ice. Nice pour of vodka. Simply Limeade. I'm going to shake it. Lime juice. Try about that much, maybe see what happens. A little stir. See what we got. Oh, that's yummy. Hmm. Yeah, you know, it's very cucumbery and limey, but if you're into that sort of thing, which I am, uh, it's very delicious. Nice and refreshing after a hot day in the kitchen. I just pulled the ribs off the smoker. After just over four and a half hours of total cook time, maybe 4.40. Of course, I did have to open the grill quite a few times, some for spritzing, some for adding veggies. Uh, but they are looking just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. I think these two are my favorite. These ribs were just nice and meaty, nice fat on them. They just, you know, they... Oh, they're just looking so good. Uh, so I'm going to let these cool for a while before I wrap them up and... Um, Tomorrow I'll finish them in the oven and sauce them a bit, probably. I'm still not sure. Some, some, some people sauce the ribs, some people don't. I might do one or two without sauce. We'll see. Okay, so now it's time to get to work on my smoked and roasted vegetable relish. Uh, all the peppers and veggies have cooled off, so I gotta clean them up. And, you know, this is something I've made before, although not exactly this way with the roasted veggies. And I wanna try some different herbs this time, so. This is going to be very much an experimental process. Um, not sure exactly how much, how easy it's going to be to show it to you guys, but I'm going to start off with these roasted tomatoes. They can just go in their hole, I think. So you're probably going to end up using all those, but throw a few in. Um, then the, the poblanos and the uh, roasted bell peppers are going to be the main other component. So I'm just going to start cleaning those, get the seeds out. Oh, are you just filling this without sound? Um, I, the camera is on, I'm not sure how much of this footage I'm going to use exactly. Zucchini in there. Oh, don't want the ends. That was close. All right, let's get some of this onion in there. Okay. 
So I got some of the smoked garlic here that I'm just trying to harvest a few cloves from. I'm going to add fresh garlic as well later. Uh, can't have too much garlic. Alright, so I didn't put any of the jalapenos or habaneros in yet, but I've got some of the tomatoes, some smoked and roasted poblanos, some of the roasted bell peppers, some of the roasted onion, the smoked zucchini, some of the smoked garlic, and uh, now I'm going to go grab my olive oil and we'll get this started. And a bit of olive oil, and we'll start blending this up. That is a start. Let's see what we got. Ooh. Ooh. It's better with the roasted vegetables. Hmm. Alright, this is going to be fun. Hmm. Hmm. Why is it spicy? Uh, it's a little... Hmm. It's possible I got one of the habaneros confused with one of the orange bell peppers. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. Not bad. Um, not bad. Alright, so we've got a great start here. Now I'm going to add some ground cumin. Good, dirty amount. And I've picked up this Essence of Emerald seasoning. It's got uh, salt, paprika, dried garlic, dried onion, black pepper, soybean oil. Uh, seems like a fun thing to add in here. Essence, a little essence. Oh, no, oh, not too much. I'm also going to add some of this uh, fresh chunky garlic paste. I picked up this ginger too. I'm just going to add a little bit of ginger. Added some more of my roasted bell peppers, uh, a little bit of cilantro, a little bit of ground black pepper. Mm. That's tasting pretty good. Oh yeah. Mm. So I took a lot of the uh, relish out and now I've got some fresh chopped mint that I'm going to blend in for the mint version. Mint and lamb is obviously a very traditional pairing. We're not going to have any mint jelly, but a little mint relish I think will go nicely for those who like that. Not minty enough. We had two of these packages of fresh mint and I put almost all of both of them in here. Let's see how we're doing now. Well, it's got some mint, but it's not quite there. Um, so they were on sale. I also picked up some dried mint, and I'm going to add that into it. So two packages of mint and about half a bottle of mint, dried mint flakes, and uh, now it's minty. It should be good. All right, so now I'm going to make my spicy version, and uh, it's going to be a smaller quantity than the other ones. Uh, so I think if I add one jalapeno and one habanero... That'll probably be pretty good. That's a good start anyway. Spicy, but I think at least one more habanero in there is called for. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah, it is spicy. Alright, just one more habanero. Mmm. <laughs> oh, this is going to be good. All right, that is going to do it for our spicy. All right, so here we have the three finished smoked and roasted vegetable relishes. Got the standard version, the mint version, and the spicy version. And uh, that might be just about a wrap for today. I was uh, thinking of trying to doctor up my barbecue sauce today as well, but it's getting late and I'm a bit tired. So I think I'm going to package this up. Do a little cleaning in the kitchen, have some dinner, and to call it a night and uh, get some rest for uh, tomorrow is going to be a very long but very fun day.